Welcome to Malpractice Podcast. So are you ready to get started? I'm so ready to get started. I'm so excited to talk about this case. It's so weird. But first of all, I have a bone. Wait, okay, no. First of all, I'm Sydney. Extra first of all. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm Jess. (laughs) And this is Malpractice Podcast. Second of all, I have a bone to pick with Trader Joe's. Don't come for Trader Joe's. Okay, I have to come for them on one thing. I saw Sydney this weekend in real life, not virtually. Yeah. Which... My one of my sorority sisters, who possibly listened, so uh, shout out to Doctor Alondra Garza. She defended, graduated. Yeah, she finished her PhD. Come correct. Yep. When you come for her, <laughs> so she had like a party to celebrate this major fucking accomplishment in her life. And so I went, and she it was in Houston. So of course Michelle and I stayed with Sydney and and Eric, and it mm-hmm. was like the time of my life per the usual. It was great. Yeah. And we were like gonna record in person, but I'm glad we didn't because for two reasons. One, it gives us another reason to get on Zoom, though I will FaceTime you any second of the day. Correct. Multiple times a day. And two, like, we got to take advantage of, yeah. like, being together. and We did a lot of really fun stuff. And we went to Trader Joe's, yes. and I've never been before. We went to Trader Joe's. This is the bone I have to pick with them. Pick it. Trader Joe's has the best chocolate-covered pretzels. Oh, where are they? Gone. Ate them. <laughs> Ours are also gone. Okay. So I was looking at the back of the bag because, you know, I'm like trying to be a calorie conscious bitch. Look at the back of the bag and I'm like, 140 calories. That's not so bad. And then I look at the serving size. What is it? I don't know. Five pretzels (laughs) per (laughs) serving. Woof. And my question with Trader Joe's is like, who do you know that opens a bag of chocolate pretzels and eats five of them and calls it a day? Who do you think you are, Trader Joe's? Who? I don't know her. If you have that kind of self-control, you should be the next president of the United States uh, of America. Because... I feel like people who have that kind of self-control, like, are in cults. They and are. I don't support. They're sociopaths or psychopaths. Yeah. You'd have to be one. I would like to shout out Trader Joe's. Uh... A of all, I don't read the back of things because they hurt my feelings. <laughs> because you love yourself. Because I only do it after I've already eaten what I want. Right. And then I realize I have two Oreos left. Yeah. Besides the point. I've never been. Um, and I was expecting it to be super. I was expecting like whole food prices. Right. It was pretty cheap. No, honestly, Trader Joe's is a bop. This is some free ads for Trader Joe's, and I don't even care. Honestly, and the flowers. I'm I'm still talking about yeah. how cheap it was. I love it. It's so interesting. It's like weird yeah. snacks that you need in your life. And the plantain chips, I ate the whole bag. I don't even want to know what the calorie count on that was. No, don't look at it. It's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I told Eric the serving size for Trader Joe's pretzels, and he said, well, yeah, I eat five like at a time because that's what fits in my hand (laughs) yeah five at a time he's like i could eat five and then stop in one session but i'm gonna have multiple sessions yeah throughout the day through my snacking period (laughs) nobody does that trader joe's stop it now okay in honor of this week's episode taking place in florida i want to play the florida man game with you i'm scared so here's what you do you're gonna love this Okay. You Google your birthday plus Florida man. I don't want to see this. You (laughs) go first. (laughs) Here's mine. (laughs) Okay. Mostly naked Florida man accused of spreading feces during school break. (laughs) Okay. And it's the most Florida thing I've ever heard. Is it? Because (laughs) September... 16 wait is it supposed to be in the year it doesn't matter okay september 16th uh mexico's independence day also my birthday (laughs) a 52 year old florida man was arrested for sniffing (laughs) according to (laughs) according to cbs news it wasn't just the sniffing it was what he and then it cuts off should i figure out what he was sniffing well i kind of want to know what he was sniffing okay It was what he was sniffing that got him in trouble. Mm -hmm. A complaint was made after he crawled. Already, mistake. He's crawling. If you're crawling and you get caught, you fucked. You can't crawl in Florida, too. Mm -mm. A gator will eat you. True. He crawled 
under some library tables immediately now. Nope. In order to, what do you think he did? Gotta be sniffing women. It was smell a woman's feet. (gasps) Then he tried to escape. What do you think he tried to escape on? A moped. A scooter. Oh, (laughs) genius. Yay. (laughs) Okay, I hate this game. I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that Florida is a lawless swamp. Such a unique (laughs) place (laughs) (laughs) yeah gators abound the the amount of due to this episode like little pop-ups that were like gator found at school what the fuck yeah the only animal i want to find at a school is a squirrel and even that stay away i have so many questions (laughs) so many also thank you florida for being yourself If there's a gator involved in a story that you're in, you've already fucked up. Stop immediately. Immediately, no. We should get into the story. There's no gators. That we know about. But there is Florida. (laughs) Imagine. True. (laughs) Are you ready? So ready. For some bullshit. Because we weren't. (laughs) But then we got into this episode and wowza, friends. Just like, wow. I still am amazed at this episode, actually. I am too. I legitimately don't think we've ever covered an episode like this. There's never been a man like this before. Correct. There's never been. Just wait. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to love it. I feel like personally it has everything. So let's talk about Dr. Malachi. His middle name is I am not now, nor have I ever been a doctor. (laughs) (laughs) Love Robinson. So heavy quotes on the doctor part throughout this entire episode. This story takes place in West Palm Beach, Florida, because of course it does. So in January of 2015, 17-year-old Malachi Love Robinson, which, side note, maybe the best name ever. No. Immediately, no. No. You hate it? I hate, I hate him, I think. (laughs) This is the most, this is a very stressful story, just. Ahead of time. Oh, yeah. He's a freak. Malachi was found wandering the halls of St. Mary's Medical Center. He, quote unquote, finds a white lab coat that reads anesthesiologist on it, plus a stethoscope. Why is that word so hard for me? Plus a stethoscope. Imagine I said it with these (laughs) Invisalign. No. So he has all the tools. Boom. He's a doctor, at least in his own mind. What's surprising is that he basically walks around this hospital pretending to be a doctor, pretending specifically to be a medical resident at this hospital. Which is like a student doctor for anyone who doesn't watch Grey's Anatomy. He gets away with this for a month. And just to be clear, this isn't one of those cases where he looks 30, but he's actually 17. This kid looks 17 while this is happening. Correct me if I'm wrong. I cannot. And I will never. And he does. He looks like a kid. He looks like a child. I will say he is a very smart looking child and he looks very serious. So I agree with you. Though I will say there are some young geniuses out there. Shout out to you living your best life being doctors early. But you're not like right. this this kid looks like, in my opinion, like 14, 15 at the time. He's obviously very intelligent. He speaks with a lot of conviction and like charisma and people seem to like listen to him. Yeah. And this is a clip of him talking. I do currently hold um, a PhD um, in what I don't feel comfortable disclosing uh, because that is not the issue here. I have been studying this particular field for a while. Um, May not have been eight years, nine years, 10 years, but it has been long enough to, I would say, justify um, what I do. Okay. I mean, I don't think, I would, how old are you? I would immediately think he was a child. I'd be like, I want your supervisor immediately. I'm a Karen. Correct. (laughs) So he did this thing where he told everyone who was trying to dig a little deeper, like, hey, who the fuck are you, bro? He'd be like, oh, I'm shadowing doctors, which, like, no. Right. You can't just fucking shadow a doctor and have access to, like, medical situations with people's, like, private information. Private rooms, yeah. So he would just tell people, oh, yeah, I'm shadowing people, and, okay, but why do you, why are you in doctor Halloween costume to shadow people? And then sometimes he would tell people, like, oh, I've been a doctor for years. Yeah. Everyone said it was, like, very convincing. I have my doubts, okay, but whatever. And 
just believed it for like a month until he finally tried to sit on a real life pregnant person's appointment. And the doctor who was running the appointment was like, wait, who the fuck are you? Right. Um, and then he got caught because they were like, no. I'm guessing also because he's wearing a coat that says he's an anesthesiologist. And I'm guessing the OBGYN is like, why does the anesthesiologist want to sit in on this appointment so bad? Yeah. It's weird, but it worked for like a month. So who am I to say that it wasn't convincing, I guess? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The amount of things that you have to lie about to just wander the hospital halls as a fake-ass doctor. Yeah. And nobody catches you for a million years. Not a single person. A.K.A. a month. Yeah. When the cops come in, because they do call the cops because you're impersonating a doctor. Yeah. They talk to him. They look in his car. He had another motherfucking lab coat in there with his name embroidered on it, which, like, there's no regulation on what you can and can't get embroidered on something. Right. But I just feel like it, it doesn't articulate anything to me criminally, it does articulate, like, this man is unwell. Correct. That should have been, like, Mayday Mayday moment, and it wasn't. But you're right that this wouldn't be that hard to do. Like, you just yeah. buy a white lab coat. You take it to one of those embroidery stores where you can have anything embroidered on anything. Right. And ho- At- order it on Etsy. Right. They'll probably do it for you immediately. We can probably get them. Correct. You want them for the next episode? Oh, you definitely could. Specifically, I know that you could because a girl that I went to school with. Oh, no. I'm not going to say her name. She did not graduate from the college that we went to together. Okay. But all of a sudden, she starts posting pictures of her at a white coat ceremony, getting the white coat put on her. Um, I had some friends that were in medical school at the medical school where she did this. Eventually, she gets arrested and escorted out of the classes because basically she had just shown up to a medical school's white coat ceremony with a white coat and her name on a note card that said, hey, they forgot to put me in the lineup. Her parents were there. The school white coated her in the ceremony and she just started showing up to medical school classes. Nah, friend. And then the registrar was like, dog, you were never accepted here. But that's how easy I think this is to do this. Like, you could just get a white coat and put your name on it. I just, where are the systems that check to make sure people aren't insane? It definitely feels like that should exist. That is the bare minimum that I want. Okay, so so back to the story. He gets he gets kicked out of the hospital. He's ar- not arrested. He's not arrested. Right. At the time, he faced no formal charges because he had, quote-unquote, treated no patients which I disagree with authentically. I think if he had caught a charge at this point, uh, I don't know what it is, but at least someone would have been like, oh, something's up. But he didn't. Yeah. They were just like, stop doing that. This is weird shit. Correct. You can't just wander the hospital halls. Yeah. Like a slap on the wrist, essentially, is what he got. If that. It was more like, you want to be a doctor? Good. That's good that you want to be a doctor. Like, you got to right. go to school. And he's like, all right. Sounds good. <laughs> but this is the point in which... The crazy really starts about the incident. He spoke about this because they didn't put his name out because he was minor, but they did talk about it. And they said the story was like broadcast everywhere. Like I'm some insane maniac who's just out here doing crazy things. Mm -hmm. He's like, I didn't operate. I didn't reach into someone's uterus. I didn't snatch up a baby, which nobody see the fact that that was the first thing you thought of. Right. Is alarming to me. Because it's almost like I wanted to do those things, but I didn't. Get out. I could have done worse is not a good excuse. Yeah, that's not a good, like, calling card to get you out of jail. Right. Well, he didn't go to jail, unfortunately. But but he was, like, calling himself a doctor. He caught this warning from the cops, which did nothing. Um, So they didn't release his name. They didn't charge him. Mistakes were made. Whatever. They said, dude, this is some weird shit. Please don't do this again. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Does things similar again. So, and then he like becomes a meme. Yeah. At the time when the story goes viral because he looks like a 12 year old (laughs) and people like use his likeness. My favorite one is the one that you posted where he's like in his full doctor getup. And he's telling someone that he has to examine their titty balls. (laughs) I'm alarmed 
when this kind of behavior happens and nobody's like, this feels like a red flag. Right. I'm like, red flag, red flag, red flag. Like these, throw all the flags. The flags are there and they are scarlet because. Yeah, big time. He doesn't stop there. In January of 2016, he takes this scam to a whole nother level at a really scary level, honestly. Yeah. This motherfucker goes out and rents out office space in a medical building at 4700 North Congress Avenue in West Palm Beach. He creates a literal medical practice named New Birth, New Life, Holistic Alternative Medical Center and Urgent Care at 18 years old. I'm alarmed. Can we talk about the name of his health clinic? (laughs) Alarmed. I'm alarmed. Whatever office and business he's trying to run, no. Immediately no. I... Would not go in there because it sounds like a cult recruitment facility. But what's worse to me about the name is, like, he added urgent care. Yes. Yes. And I think that is so scary. I 100% agree. Because if you're going to pretend to be a doctor, don't, at the very least, I mean, don't do that. But don't pretend to be the doctor that deals with urgent medical concerns. Yeah. Like, if someone could come to you with their arm broken in half... Like, it's a miracle that no one died while this is happening. 100%. So he creates this website, a Facebook page, an account on a doctor rating website, (laughs) healthgrades.org, adds fake reviews, adds a headshot, which is probably his high school yearbook picture. Mm -hmm. Immediately jail, sir. Immediately straight to jail just at the audacity straight to jail he actually hired two employees an operations director and a programs director and to that i say who (laughs) took this job who and a director of operations and you couldn't smell the nonsense Also, you said the audacity, and that should be the tagline of this entire episode. The audacity, yeah. Dr. Malachi Love Robinson, comma, the audacity. Okay, done. This is kind of long, but I want to read how he described himself on healthgrades.org. I love this. I love this. He describes himself as a well-rounded professional. He spelled professional wrong in the original post. Oh, my God. That treats... And cares for patients using a system of practice that bases treatment of psychological functions and abnormal conditions on natural laws governing the human body, utilizing psychological, physiological, and mechanical methods such as air, water, light, heat, earth, phototherapy, food and herb therapy, psychotherapy, electrotherapy, physiotherapy, minor surgery mechanotherapy, naturopathic corrections and manipulations, and natural methods of modalities together with natural medicine, natural processed foods, herbs, and nature's medicines. Sir, why just have so many questions? Minor surgery? You didn't want to just put fucking surgery? You're already lying. Just fucking put full operations. The fact, though, that he was willing to say that he could perform minor surgeries... I mean, he literally is saying, like, essentially that he's a witch doctor as well. Right. That's what it sounds like. Oh, God. Okay. And also, there's, like, there's this whole weird conversation about naturopathic medicine or, like, holistic medicine. Yeah. So he claimed to have, like, a certificate from the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. Like, he put that up. He said, "Okay, I have this certificate um it's a group of holistic health professionals that are like herbalists and other drug-free professionals now before we like come for them i do want to say there there is a place for those types of people who are like trained and certified if people don't want yeah people to believe different things like that kind of natural space isn't for me like give me all of the drugs when i'm sick and Same. only all of them but you know whatever there are people who do this however In order to get the certificate, he, like, sent in copies of degrees and diplomas by mail that were, like, a lie to get access to this certificate to make him more authentic. Right. The the group, um, the American Association of Drugless Practitioners, their director, Donald Rosenthal, said 
he lied to us. He is not affiliated with us. Like, don't put us period. Yeah. With him in the same sentence besides never part of our team. Yeah. Um, Donald said, look, this credential does not allow for people to diagnose or treat medical conditions. Yeah. I question what the point is, but that's fine. Um, he said all that people can do with their certificate once they have it is consult and educate, which is fine. People who get the certificate have to sign a document saying that they understand the certificate does not substitute for the skills of a medical doctor. Right. But because he had received the certificate through false documentation, he be, I think this is what this piece of paper is his only quote unquote real one. That's actually yeah. given to him. I think he was like, I'm a doctor. Exactly. Crazy eyes. No, you're totally right. Um, and the degree that he sent them, they were all fake. Like, remember he's 17. Yeah. Like they can't have been real. <laughs> he's like, I got my doctorate at the North pole. Sounds good. I think it was actually the university of Arizona. Yeah. A big lie. Which is like, they should have come for him, too. I think they were like, what the fuck? (laughs) So that's how he's, like, trying to set up his credentials back at the New Birth, New Life Medical Center. I'm offended by the name. Same. Dr. Love, as he calls himself, has just started treating an 86-year-old woman named Anita Morrison. She has arranged for him to start making house calls at her home after she had been to several doctors who she said were not able to help her. So she had like stomach issues, right? Like really bad. Yes. Dr. Love, quote unquote, begins examining her with like a stethoscope. He's looking at her ears. He's looking at her, you know, mouth and eyes, whatever. Probably couldn't see a damn thing. Right. Because he diagnoses her with arthritis. (laughs) He also says he can heal her stomach issues with vitamins, which like... Yeah. Are you joking me right now? He's so lucky that she did not have, like, appendicitis and die. Yeah. She said, I was in severe pain, and he said he could help me. He seemed very intelligent. I didn't suspect him. I thought he was legitimate. What's also alarming is that she took her, like, nurse yes. with her. Yes. To these appointments. A hundred, Like, her home health nurse was there with her. Honestly, fired. Right. Honestly. Fire that nurse. You can't sniff it out? Shh. Like the Florida man sniffing feet? (laughs) Sniff it out. Sniff it out. Get under the table and sniff those feet out. (laughs) Sniff it out. (laughs) So Dr. Love gives her valerian and melatonin, which are both for sleeping, but okay. I think he was like, if she's asleep, she won't be in pain. Oh, there's no telling what this man was thinking. That's what I think he was thinking. So a few weeks later, he's been treating her. She calls him and she says, I'm having severe stomach pain. Can you come over right away? He says yes. He shows up about three hours later. His definition of right away is very different from the world's. Already have questions. He was probably in fucking high school classes. And he was like, ooh, be there when I can. He was probably freaking the fuck out too. Right. He was like, oh, severe stomach pain. Let me Google that for two hours. Let me pull up WebMD. Right. Be right over there. So he gets there. He's like, I can't actually treat you for this. You have to go to the hospital. I don't have my equipment and things that I need. So she's like, okay, great. She goes to the hospital after Dr. Love calls 911 and he's like, my patient needs immediate help. Leaving Dr. Love alone in her house, she goes away in an ambulance to the hospital. A little while later, he goes to visit Anita in the hospital. He starts talking to her doctor. He's like, well, I'm her general practitioner. I can help you understand what's going on here. At that point, you're telling me the ER doctor was not like, who is this man? Get out of here. I've never heard of you in my life. And when I Google you, your your headshot looks fake. Yeah, it, immediately. Headshots are very important for me to judge whether or not I'm going to trust you as a doctor. And I'm not kidding. Right. So he's like talking out in the hall with the ER doctor. He comes back in and she's, he's like, you need to have several pretty expensive medical tests done. It's going to be expensive, but it's going to help us figure out what's wrong with you, which whatever. She's like, okay, fine. Meanwhile, he has been a busy little bee while he was alone in her house. So she comes home, finds that money is missing from her bank account. She starts digging. She finds that he has written himself two checks, one in the amount of $500 made out to Dr. Love and one in the amount of $1,200 made out to the New Hope Med Center. Both checks have her signature, but they have very obviously been forged because she's like, I would not have written those. 
She calls the police. They find that her bank account is also missing around $35,000 in additional money that he's stolen from her. With all of this clearly happening, as soon as she starts getting quote-unquote treatment from Dr. Love, the authorities are called in, and at that point, the investigation is kicked off. So at the same time, never been a Dr. Love (laughs) is in the middle of kicking off a Facebook-announced event for a grand opening of his fake medical practice with his fake degrees and his fake life (laughs) inside the West Palm Beach uh, Medical Plaza. Like, he has a business partner that he—a legit business partner, which I will never understand. No. Who, like, loaned him 10 k to start the practice, which— They interviewed his medical practice partner, and they were like, so how did this 17-year-old kid trick you? And he's like, well, for several months, he tricked the state of Florida, so why are you coming at me? <laughs> Don't embarrass me. <laughs> We're all in Florida together. Right, correct. So we're all easily tricked. We're all here sniffing feet as part of the Florida community. <laughs> we are feet sniffers. Period. He tricked you too. He tricked a lot of people. Everyone's been double-crossed. Don't point all of your judgy fingers at me, friendo. Exactly. Exactly. My favorite part of all of this is that the door of his medical practice had his name on it that included MD, PhD, as well as a really long string of fake credentials. Because if you're going to pretend to be a doctor, why not pretend to be a double doctor? Like, just go for broke, right? I don't think he understood, because he got away with it for so long, how illegitimate it looks to have a 25-year-old with a PhD and an MD. Right. After his name, there's just a bunch of letters, and everyone is like, what do these mean? And he's like, oh, that was a mistake by the printer. Don't worry about it. A mistake by the (laughs) printer. That sign on the door was actually due to be changed. There are many types of degrees out there that hold the title as doctor, whether they are a physicist or an engineer. Just because someone has a title doctor in front of their name does not necessarily imply MD. So, at this point, a local reporter gets a call from a concerned individual who, spilling some tea, may or may not have been one of Malachi's family members. That's me on my own family. (laughs) Same. Immediately. If this was my cousin, I'd be like, he's a bullshitter. Very sus. Sniff it out. Sniff out some bullshit. Sniff out some feet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Did you like that? (laughs) I don't like it, but I do like that you said it. (laughs) (laughs) This person saw the Facebook announcement for the clinic's grand opening and was like, um, what? Sounds great. So this is on YouTube right now. I'm going to include a clip of this. This reporter basically shows up and starts asking him, what's going on here? We got a hot tip that you aren't a real doctor. He says, I'm not claiming anywhere to be a medical doctor. Except for that MD. But Except okay. for... <laughs> so it's so funny. At this point in the the editing... <laughs> yes, they pan over to the door where it says, like, Dr. Malachi Love Robinson, you know, MD, PhD. <laughs> this motherfucker thought it was the 1700s, 1800s, where he could just be a doctor. Where you could just say, I'm a doctor, and people were like, sounds great. Thank God you're here. <laughs> That's not what happened. So we'll include that link in the show notes, but you can see in this video... They're giving, he's giving them like a mini tour of the office, which is shockingly huge and well laid out. Like someone gave this 17 year old a ton of medical office space. Well, he he's paying for it. Yeah. Through Anita's money. Right. And as they're interviewing him, he takes off his stethoscope. He takes off his white doctor's coat on camera and he's like, hi, I'm Malachi. Can I help you? You can. You cannot medically help me. Which is amazing. It's like, sir, you just came out of the back with a clipboard in your hand and a stethoscope on. And now you're telling me you have never pretended to be a doctor. (laughs) And he's like, yes, that's correct. You've got a lot of sites online all claiming that you're a doctor. Well, no, they don't claim medical medical doctor, as I am am aware of. Um, They if you could stop recording, please. I will lie like that. He's such a liar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the reporter is basically breaking the story as it's fucking happening like a boss. Right. And Malachi invites her back the next day. Once he realizes, I think, like, he's fucking caught, he's like, Mm -hmm. come tomorrow. And takes her a grand tour on a grand tour on camera 
of the space. And she keeps asking him, like, so you're not a doctor? Yeah. Like, just to confirm by confirmation I confirmed earlier, I want to just hear you say it again. And he's like, no, and I don't claim to be. Correct. And then the door very clearly says otherwise. And he has a fake medical degree up on the wall, which is literally claiming to be a doctor. He makes a ton of excuses and everyone else is messing up and making it seem like he's a doctor when he's not. Right. Obviously, I tried to get a picture of my family framed and they gave me a fake medical degree. Like, I don't know. I just put it up. My decorator did that. Who knows? But the question that they should have asked him is like, why would everyone else be so desperate to make you into a medical doctor? And it's like, he's so smart. He should have just gone to medical school. He should have just gone to medical school. So while this is going on, the Florida Board of Health and the police right. actually already have an investigation open on him because of what he did to this patient, Anita Morrison, who he just straight up defrauded. A hundred percent. Right. Whether or not he knows it, he's like on the run at this point. Mm-hmm. He gets caught because someone makes that hero phone call that a person's portraying himself as a 25-year-old doctor and he's actually an 18-year-old. And the cops are like, bingo, bingo. Boingo. (laughs) Like, we got it. (laughs) Yeah. So an undercover cop comes into his place of lies and as a patient, pretending to be a patient, and he gives her a physical exam and he gave her medical advice. Can you imagine? Um, The police undercover officer said, I have an itchy throat and never been a doctor, love, said... Um, that he took her weight, he checked her breathing and a temp and said, go get allergy medication for aller- for allergies. <laughs> like, duh, bitch. Right. <laughs> when he's, like, caught and, you know, speaking about this, he's like, I didn't give any scripts. Like, no medical advice was given. But you just told her to go take me- allergy medicine. That is literally medical advice. Right. This was, like, the spark for the charges. So, yeah, they were going to find him on Anita's shit. But, like, this is the medical shit where he's going to get... He's going to go, going to go down. Yeah. It's like a crime to practice medicine without a license, if you didn't know. And, like, you have to be a yeah. real-life doctor to, like, say you are. Sure. Like you can't just lie. I don't know if anyone's confused about that at this point. <laughs> right. This is one of the things that they check, believe it or not. Well, you know, they should check a little bit harder, I guess, in Florida. <laughs> but yeah. in further lies, he said he had this PhD from a private Christian university but then, like, refused to share the name. Sure. Uh, I guess he thought, like, if I say it's private, people won't question me. But they were like, yeah, which one? And he was like, no, no. Right. None of your business. Um, because it doesn't exist. And then he said he was certified to provide pr- alternative health care. Right. They were like, keep my name out of your mouth specifically. Out your yes. lying mouth. Yeah. The, have you ever seen the movie Catch Me If You Can? Mm-mm. Okay. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. He's, like, a super young Leo. And he's, like, writing checks. He's forging checks. He's pretending like he's a pilot. This all has very, like, catch me if you can energy, okay? Mm. This kid, in my opinion, clearly has some balls to be doing this kind of thing at 17. Like, when I was 17, I was like, oh, my God, am I going to get asked to the prom? And he's like, oh, my God, I don't give a shit because I'm a doctor. (laughs) (laughs) The idea, though, of a 17-year-old giving you a medical exam. You are 10 years old. (laughs) It's so stressful to me. Like, I old doctors only from now on. Yeah. So basically, he gives this undercover cop a, an exam, right? And the second he gave the fake patient an exam, he could now be arrested because they've actually caught him in the act of breaking a law. They go back, they do the paperwork they need to, and they decide to arrest him. As he's being arrested, the reporter and the camera crew that we talked about earlier are there And they're filming. He's being taken out in his white coat with his name on it to a police cruiser. So he's arrested. He's released on a $26,000 bail. And while he's out on bail, he does an interview with Good Morning America. Please tell me why. I mean, this just speaks to why this children should not be doctors for a lot of reasons. Yes. This judgment call is one of them. (laughs) Yeah. And where are his family members? Where is anyone supervising this child, literal child? So during this Good Morning America interview, they're like, just tell us, like, are you a fraud? And he gets up and he walks out of the interview. 
Are you a fraud? Because it seems like everything you're saying to me is either evasive or an outright lie. I don't appreciate your tone. I don't appreciate the way you're portraying this interview to actually be. And then a moment we didn't expect. Are you in big trouble? I mean, it seems like you've spoken to a lawyer who's prepared you for to talk not only to the media, but the police as well. I don't know where you're receiving this information from, but it is inaccurate. Um, I'm sorry, questions. I'm going to have to cut this in this interview short. And in fact, he did, walking out the door. Right, says the fraud. On January 4th, 2018, Malachi Love Robinson pleaded guilty to 14 criminal charges and was sentenced to three and a half years behind bars. And he was instructed to pay back the over $80,000 he had swindled from people, including his patients, his business partners. The list goes on. So at this point, Malachi does what any 17-year-old would do and calls a press conference. And a psychopath. Of his own, where it looks like he's running for, I don't know, student government office. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's the vibe that I'm getting from him. He asked the community to pray for him. And he's like, I just want the truth to come out. Do you want the truth to come out? Do you really? The truth is out. Right. <laughs> In Florida, this situation is a third degree felony. Yeah. And he is charged as such. Falsifying his medical license is the tip of the iceberg with the psycho. Misleading patients. Fraud. Yeah. Um, he was interviewed by the New York Times when he was forced to close his criminal facility, is what I'm calling it. Okay. <laughs> um, instead of a medical one. And he said the charges against him were gut-wrenching. For who? For the people who actually were dumb enough to walk through your doors? Right. If anyone has that many accomplishments, I'm sus. Nope. I don't trust it. Nope. If you see more than, like, three sets of letters after someone's name, they a damn lie. Yeah. He said, I'm not trying to hurt people. I'm just a young black guy who opened up a practice who is trying to do some good in the community. If that is a negative thing, we have a lot more work to do in the community than to single me out. Which I want to pause here for a minute. Mm -hmm. And say, that is incredibly insulting to people who uh -huh. are actually certified and have the credentials to do the work that he is pretending he was doing. And like being a medical professional, a nurse, a doctor, a nurse tech, anything, anything in medicine. Yeah. Uh, all of my hats off to you. It is so fucking hard to pretend to be a medical professional, to lie, to deceive, to steal. And then to say like, I opened up a practice. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You opened up a, a den of scams. Right. Like, it's not a real practice. You shouldn't be able to use that language. <laughs> yeah. People spend their lives, they dedicate their lives to save people. They prioritize the real health of the community. Like, yeah. go to medical school, you garbage king, <laughs> or shut the fuck up right. and let the real medical professionals do that work. And that's it. I love Jess on a soapbox. Get up there. I mean, they save life. They do magic. Yeah. It's magic to me mm -hmm. what they do. And I hate him for saying that. Like, I'm just trying to do good. Sir, you can't even vote, bitch. <laughs> like, you're not trying to do good. Right. You are literally a liar. Yeah, it's not It's not good. Um. Also, I feel like... If this had just happened and then he had let it go and, and tried to move on with his life, that would be another thing. But he doesn't stop. Like, he's a scammer, plain and simple. Big scam. If you got caught, you know, pretending to be a doctor and hiding around corners, stealing lab coats, and they were like, dude, I don't know if anyone told you this, what you're doing is weird shit. You can't do this. If he had been like, I really want to be a doctor. Like, I would love to do, I would love to volunteer here. Yeah. I guarantee that hospital would be like, all right, he's a little weird. We can guide him in the right direction. Yeah. But he didn't really want to do that. He wanted the accolades and power. Without the work. Of being a doctor without learning or be doing any of the work. Correct. And fuck him for that. Totally agree. I guess the bigger picture was... Seeing the smiles, you know, people thinking that you are something that you're not. 
And on top of all this, while the major case in Florida was pending... This is my fucking favorite part. He was accused of trying to cheat an older woman into buying him a Jaguar in Virginia. He was trying to buy a $35,000 vehicle because this man will not quit. (laughs) <laughs> and of course, this is what he does while he's out on bail for this other investigation. He spent time in a Virginia prison after pleading guilty to a count each of making false statements to obtain credit and a forgery charge. He eventually served one year after the judge suspended the majority of the prison term for him to deal with the Florida situation. And by situation, I mean the 14 charges that he was facing and eventually pleaded guilty to. Also, I love... The rant that you just went on. Can I just say that? I'm so offended by him. I loved it. Well, and you brought this up earlier. Like, he's so he's so smart. And if he's actually dedicated to doing good and, and helping people, it feels like he could have done that. But I don't think that's actually what he was after. No, I just think he wanted... I I, I think he has a mental illness, I will say. Same. But I think he just wanted to play pretend. And people yeah. believed him. That's the thing. If in doubt, if a slight smidge of doubt, suss it out. Ooh. Like, you don't give people your money. That's the other thing. Ooh, that was good. If in doubt, suss it out. <laughs> I don't trust no bitch. No. He's a tricky bitch. He's tricksy. He tricked everybody. Like, he's a tricky bitch for sure. My favorite thing maybe about this entire case is that the sheriff's office posted on Twitter, quote, just because you saw a season of Grey's Anatomy doesn't mean you should practice medicine. And a truer statement has never been made. Preach. And as a watcher of Grey's Anatomy, I agree. Right. So he pleads guilty. He did the crime. He did the time. After he spent 18 months in jail for the first case, he says, I was a young kid that got overly ambitious and just said, to hell with the rules and regulations. That is the story of his life. But okay, he's saying this after 18 months in jail. That was like a year ago. He's like, I was a young kid. You're still a young kid, number one. And those rules and regulations that you decided to say to hell with, those are the ones that keep people safe. I hate him. (laughs) At the end of the interview, he says he still wants to be a doctor. And if any medical school, Mm -hmm. I will go and solo boycott that (laughs) solo boycott. Where are his where is his family? I'm still so confused. Where was this literal child's parents when he was 17 and pretending to be a doctor? They were probably like, oh, my God. There are pictures. He posted pictures with his family where they were like looking at him so proud, like in his medical getup. And I'm like, what do you people think is going on? I think they were like, oh, he wants to be a doctor. How awesome. How great for him. Yeah. And he was like, I am a doctor. No, psych. I am a doctor. I am currently treating patients. I have to go to rounds. See you later. (laughs) See you later. Yeah. So there's no other update on this um, as of yet. I've been I've been searching because I'm like, where is it? Um, Same. But I know that they just the last coverage of it was in 2021. I'm sure it's on the back burner because of all of the of COVID and everything. But I will find him. I will find out. And yeah. we will share when we do find that. I set a Google alert because I was like, I want to know everything that this child does moving forward. Do you have regrets about what you've done, or do you regret that you've been caught? I 100% regret what what I've done. And the reason being is that because, number one, I've messed my life up, you know, a a great deal. You still want to be a doctor? I do. And, you know, some people, like, you know, Michelle's a good person, so she's like, oh, he's young. Not not him specifically, but she's like, oh, people are young, they make mistakes. Mm -mm. I'm fine with that, too. He had, this is, again... How many stop signs does someone have to run through yeah. for us to be like, enough of the driving with your eyes closed, my yeah. dude? I don't believe in second chances when the first fuck up was stealing $30,000 from someone and pretending to be a doctor. Not the, not a becoming a doctor. No. Oh, fuck no. So that's the story of the fake doctor Malachi Love Robinson, and that's what we know about that. Thanks for listening. 
Yeah, we hope you like this episode. Don't forget to leave us a review, subscribe, check us out wherever you like to listen. If you come up, come across anything crazy like this motherfucker, and you're like, oh, they should know about that, <laughs> send, it, send it our way. Yeah. We will, we will want to know about it. Yeah, got a crazy thing that you want to hear about, but you don't want to do the research on? We'll do it for you. Oh yeah. And don't forget, malpractice, malpractice makes, makes perfect. perfect. Bye-bye.